You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Hey everyone, I'm Mark. I'm Malia. I'm Christina. We're uh, CU PMNR residents. We're gonna go ahead and share our screen. I don't know. We're gonna get our screen shared here. Second. No. Nope. It looks like we're going to have to allow some new security updates on a new computer. So we'll be right back. Bye. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. We got it going now. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see our screen. Um, so we're going to go over kind of a review of our residency program. We're going to try to highlight kind of things that you wouldn't be able to find on our website. Um, this you can find. Uh, Dr. Laker is our program director along with Dr. Niehaus and newly named Dr. Miron. She was just added as a program director this year. And then Mallory Pridey is our program coordinator. And we have to say she is one of the best. If you have any issue in your residency, whether it's personal, professional, getting an extra license, she's your go-to person and will help you figure it out. So we're a mix of residents really from all across the United States, from the East Coast to the West Coast. We have a mix of MDs and DOs, um, kind of anyone and any everyone applies to our program and ends up coming here. So some quick facts about the program. We have six adult spots and one PEDS combined spot per year. They're all advanced spots, so no categorical positions, but a lot of people do end up coming here for intern year. Uh, whether that's at St. Joe's Hospital or three through CU. Um, I did a CU internal medicine intern year and Christina did St. Joe's. So a lot of people do it. And I think they're very comfortable with us at that at this point. Um, we have two month rotations. All our sites use Epic except for the VA. Um, we take all home call Wednesday to Wednesday. The PGY2s um, take all of the holiday calls. So you'll never do one after that. Um, you get 42 weekends off your PGY2 year on down to 49, actually 50 weekends off. We didn't update that. Uh, <laughs> we can do math. Uh, 50 weekends off your uh, PGY4 year. Our didactics, they're on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 p.m. I'd say 99% of them are attending led with a couple intro lectures led by uh, upper level residents at this point. So our sites, I think this is one thing that we wanted to spend a lot of time on, not necessarily going through each site, but highlighting the diversity of experiences that we get uh, at CU. So we rotate at a bunch of different hospitals at the main uh, university hospital. It's a tertiary referral center where you're gonna see uh, ECMO patients, heart transplants, um, still high level trauma, a lot of kind of unique complex medical patients that you're not gonna see in a lot of different places. And we have Denver Health, which is our county hospital. It's a level one trauma center. So you're gonna see more of an underserved population that's coming in at later stage of diseases or in high trauma situations. We rotate at Craig Hospital, which is a private um, traumatic spinal cord injury and, and traumatic brain injury hospital. Uh, pretty unique. It's a one, a world-class hospital and two privately owned. So we get to see the private side of rehab as well as the uh, academic side. And we also rotate at our children's hospital, which is always nationally one of the top ranked hospitals in the world and is an catchment area for a huge part of the, the West and Midwest. So you get to see a lot of people from all over there. And then we rotate at the VA, that's really your bread and butter rehab, um, your amputee, your strokes, things like that. Uh, so I think it's a great, great place to get a lot of different training from a lot of amazing um, clinical sites. 
So this is where they all are. Um, most residents, which you'll see on the next slide, live in pretty central Denver. So our our core sites are about 15 minutes away if you live in the middle of Denver. Um, so they're all really close. The VA Children's and the U are all at our Anschutz campus out here in Aurora. Denver Health is in downtown. And then Craig Hospital is down a little further south. And then the mountains are this way, uh, about 45 minutes to the foothills. We don't have any rotations out there, but- We can see them from the hospital. But we can see them from the hospital <laughs> and we're heading there quite frequently. So this is where residents live. It is pretty spread out. I'd say over the last year or so, it started to become more centralized in this area just because um, people make recommendations of where they live and uh, other residents tend to follow that those recommendations. So we're gonna skip through these slides. We're gonna send them so you guys can look at them, but it's just kind of the nitty gritty of each rotation. All right, so now we get to talk about some of the fun stuff. Um, the kind of extracurriculars, what life is like in Colorado, and then a little bit of kind of what is post-residency, where do our residents go after their four years, or I guess maybe th four years, but definitely three years here. Um, and so during our time, there's a lot that we do for extracurriculars. You know, we have our fun on the weekends, but a lot of awesome volunteer opportunities that many, many people um, actually get involved with, which is great. So um, kind of more in the hospital side of things, we can do a lot of medical education with med students rotating with us, um, usually more on the inpatient rehab rotations. Uh, there's a lot of research QI that you can get involved in. Um, and then we also as residents participate in all the recruitment for new resident classes and are able to help with the interviews, which honestly is a unique and really, really cool experience to be part of. And then um, there, you know, it depends on your interest, but if you're interested in sports coverage, there's a whole lot of that. We cover Aurora Public Schools and then now another district as well, where we have the opportunity to do um, football coverage and a variety of other sports coverage, pre-participation physicals, and then there's some even some running races that people have covered. There's also adaptive ski programs in Colorado um, that are great to participate in. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do it because of COVID, but um, Generally, there's one that is more pediatrics oriented and then another that is uh, more adult oriented. And then we have um, something called our RSVP clinic. So the Rehab Services Volunteer Partnership Clinic that is run out of Craig Hospital, which Mark mentioned a little bit ago. Um, but it's an awesome free uh, clinic for uninsured, kind of underinsured patients who have a variety of rehab diagnoses. Um, and they're generally seen about once a month. Um, and residents can participate in that clinic in a variety of different ways. So one of our current residents pretty much leads the thing. We have other residents who help with the clinic part of thing. We, like I help kind of with the enrollment process of patients in the clinic. So there's just so many opportunities for us to give back, which is great. Um, and then we have, of course, a medical student interest group, um, which definitely is, you know, it's a, it's a role that I think a lot of uh, residencies have, but is something great as well. So a few pictures of these things. So the kind of upper left, ooh, that might be your right, um, <laughs> is Hobie Day. <laughs> yeah, is Hobie Day at Craig. So we, we um, go to Cherry Creek Reservoir, which is kind of in the Denver area and take all the patients out there and um, really awesome. We have a lot of hands-on ultrasound training that we do um, both with attendings and then also at our VA. There's um, a lot of time that we spend just as residents going into the rooms and there's ultrasound machines we can just use and learn together. And some of our current residents have actually created an ultrasound curriculum for, a, for us, which has been awesome to follow. Um, Malia is showing off here at <laughs> our uh, <laughs> sideline sports coverage um, workshop that we actually just had this last weekend, which was awesome kickoff to the sports season uh, where we got a lot of hands on um, kind of training and using spine boards and, you know, common conditions that we may come across that helped us all feel more comfortable going to that sideline training. Um, and then our program director, Dr. Laker here, uh, does a lot of the sports coverage with us and is really involved. So it's kind of unique to get that extra time with him as well. And it's really cool. All right, more pictures. This is kind of the less academic stuff, but as you can see, we do a lot of stuff together and really like each other. So this is a place to go. I think if you're looking for community, even if you don't have family out in Colorado or you don't have people in the West, you can totally find your own family amongst this residency program. Um, 
and you know our residents we do a lot of outdoor stuff but there's also a very good handful of people who don't as much love going to the mountains and doing you know crazy skiing biking running all of that and there's so much to do and we still all find events to do together um one of actually the best things we've done is the bottom corner is our resident retreat we do every year it's just a great time to bond and um yeah it's just it's a great crew all right, so I can take over the last couple of slides and we'll leave some time for questions. Um, so I'll go through these pretty quickly. But from a research research perspective, as a PGY2, when you start with CUPMNR, everyone is assigned a research mentor and they, we do try to assign those based on people's interests. Um, you can also seek out your own mentor. Um, there is a requirement that everyone um, be involved or have a research project at the end of residency um, because publication isn't always in your control. You don't have to have it published, but most of a lot of our residents do end up publishing before graduation. Um, and so some examples there you can read through, we'll be sending out slides, but um, you, we typically have multiple sites. And so you can find a research mentor who's interested in the field or an area of PMNR that you are interested in and get involved in their research. There's also no limit. And so if you have a project and then find something else more interesting, um, there's never a problem to jump into projects. Our, um, most of our attendings, and we have a lot of some research faculty as well, um, are always looking to help mentor um, residents with research research. Um, so just to touch on fellowships that you can do within CU PMR after residency. So we have a pain medicine fellowship. It's a one-year ACGME um, accredited program, and it's primarily at the UCH campus. Um, in the past, we, that residency also has a little bit of sports coverage with it, but um, it's mostly pain and spine. Um, and then there's a pediatric rehabilitation fellowship. That's a two-year fellowship, also ACGME accredited, um, and it's primarily at the Children's Hospital. And these, the pediatric residents are then joined by two the are uh, joined by the um, fifth year from the combined peds residency um, program who is finishing their uh, combined program and then we have a spinal cord in injury fellowship at craig hospital um, and that's a one-year acgme program um, it's a really great place to train as residents like we said we all get to rotate there and it um, it is an amazing experience i know mark and i have already done that rotation um, and it was incredible um, and then we have a new sports medicine fellowship so this coming year the our first match will be this January um, for the PMNR specific sports medicine spot. Um, so we are very excited to have this as a fellowship through CU um, PMNR now, and we are excited to grow it as the years come. Um, it'll be a one-year ACGME program, and you'll be primarily at university, and then there'll be um, you'll be covering sports throughout the program and be working with the um, EM and IM um, sports medicine fellow fellows somewhat. Um, and it's the spot is created through the family medicine sports medicine program. Um, then there is a amputee fellowship, which is also a new fellowship with us, and it'll be primarily at the VA. It's a non ACGME program, but you're working with our attending who is um, well regarded, Dr. So, um, and you get to see a lot of cool things through the the VA uh, the VA population there. So we're excited about it. So after residency, where do our residents go? And basically everywhere. So where you can see here, we have people on the West Coast, people on the East Coast, um, right in the middle. And um, there's no limit really to where you wanna go after. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for like a broad network of um, former residents to reach out to or places that you're interested in going, there's usually someone that we, we know or that has done something similar that we can connect you with. And then, so what do we do? What do our residents do after um, after we graduate? And so um, this little pie chart just kind of shows you what fellowships are, um, where we go after um, residency. And so um, about 50% of our residents do um, pain or spine, I mean, pain or sports. Um, and then the other half are split between spinal cord. We've had um, residents do cancer. We've had residents do general peds, uh, our general PM&R and then peds PM&R. And then an update to that is um, um, we show is doing a palliative care um, fellowship as well. So we have uh, quite a diversity um, and you can really do anything you want. And I think that goes back to uh, Mark's kind of um, our diversity of exposure kind of leads to a diversity of um, kind of long career plans with residents. So 
All right, so we kind of blew through that. Um, does anyone have any questions for us? This this slide, you can reach out to any of us on these emails. Um, you can see our Twitter there and our um, Instagram account. Um, on the Instagram account and on our website, you can find some opportunities to join for a uh, resident applicant happy hour coming up next month. And um, are there any questions? Yeah, I see a couple. Uh, one other thing I wanted to highlight is we're a program that if there's something you want to do and it doesn't exist, if you're motivated enough to make it happen, you can make it happen. So Derek Stokes, one of our PGY3s, felt like we were doing a lot of sideline coverage, but didn't have some kind of baseline foundational knowledge that everyone was getting. And that was a barrier to some residents doing sideline coverage. So he created a curriculum for everyone um, to learn. And we got Dr. Laker and Dr. Miron to come and help lead it with us and give kind of the basics of what are the scary things that you can't miss on the sidelines to make people feel more comfortable doing sideline sports coverage. And now we have nine residents signed up to do sideline coverage, which is the most in probably the last five years. Um, so I see questions about um, rural pediatric rehab opportunities. Um, so I, none of us are going into pediatrics, so we're not as familiar with that. Do you know from like the med school side? I don't know. I know they have, um, so when you're part of the combined PEDS PMNR program, a lot of it goes through actual children's hospital because you're going to be like doing a lot of pediatrics as well. So you're primarily under them. And I know that, um, they have opportunities for rural rotations through pediatrics, so I don't know if there's specific pediatric rehab or if it's just pediatric rural options. But for example, like one of my friends is down in um, Durango, which is like Southern Colorado, and it's a month long rotation where it's mostly an outpatient clinic that she's in. Um, but I can, we can get you in touch with the peds person as well for more info on that. And I do know there are global opportunities as well for pediatric rehab. One of our, um, our fifth year, um, now just came back from Indonesia, I believe. Yeah. Um, and for the next question, exposure to pediatric pain, we do have a specific spot in like pain residency that's a pediatric um, pain fellowship spot. Um, and I will say our pediatric attendings are really great when we do our two month peds rotation through the general residency that they help you find the clinics that match your career interests. So for example, I'm there now and she's put me in like pediatric sports clinics. And so if you're interested in that, you can find your way. Mm -hmm. um, and then exposure to pain PGY2, definitely. Um, if that's something you're really interested in, um, the chiefs, Malia and I, this year, we created the schedule. So if you have a specific interest in that or like Maybe I do, but I really need to see this early on. We can curtail your um, rotations to get at least one two month rotation where you'll get some pain exposure. And you'll be able to do axial injections as a two on those rotations. Uh, what does ultrasound training look like? We have a formal curriculum um, throughout the year, but we also, um, some residents, uh, Mark, I, and Derek have just created a curriculum too that's like a self-learn curriculum. And the purpose of that was that when you're on those rotations, you can go through and do modules and questions and build your experience when it makes the most sense to you within your schedule. Um, and that's on top of the, the formal curriculum that we have. And then let's see, as far as the biking, walking friendly um, I would say, you know, it depends where you live. Like if you live really far away, it can be tricky, but if you choose the neighborhoods, right. And there's a lot of wonderful neighborhoods right around where our um, clinical sites are, it can be very walkable, very bikeable. Actually, we have a lot of faculty who specifically bike to work only bike around town. So very, very available to you. Yeah, and I, I biked to both Denver health and, and shoots like April through November, most rotations. And it's, a 25 minute bike ride for me compared to a 15 minute drive. So it's not that big of a difference. That being said, you do need a car though, because we do have some clinics at like in Boulder where you get to go to the in, yeah. So in for call. So a car would be necessary. Okay. Family friendly. Yes. Um, yes we have a lot of residents who have had babies, babies. both during residency already have babies. And, you know, it's just one more person to come to the brewery with us. <laughs> that, and I would say our call schedule is very friendly um, to us in general and to having a family. Um, I think we take pretty light call compared to most 
residencies and it's very flexible. Um, I think we're all close enough to each other to know that things come up and are free to help each other whenever we need it. Um, and to get involved, I think the next step, because we're running out of time here, but would be to sign up to come to one of our um, residency um, events. Re you can reach out to us by email. Um, and yeah. Yeah. The CUPM and our um, residency Instagram is where we're trying to put a lot of things as well. So um, if you follow us too, there's there should be good links as like for the happy hour link. Yeah, and if you're interested, I don't know if there are spots still left for away rotations, but reaching out to Mallory, mm -hmm. um, Pridey would be um, who I would reach out for that if you're interested in doing something like that. Obviously, there might be COVID restrictions at your home institution or other, you know, uh, fourth year restrictions that you have. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks for awesome. letting us. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks.